Señoras y señores, buenos días. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to our press conference. I'd like to thank you for being here with us this afternoon. Let me begin by introducing our two speaker, Dita Charansova, head of the uh, uh, member of the Renew Group. She is a vice president of the European Parliament in charge of relations with Latin America. And we also have the honor and pleasure to have with us the legitimate interim president of Venezuela, Juan Guaido, who is also the speaker of the National Assembly of Venezuela. We also have representatives from four political groups with us, Mr. Esteban Gonzalez Pons, MEP, vice president of the EPP Group, Mr. Javi Lopez, MEP from the S&D Group, co-president of the delegation to the Euro Latin American Parliamentary Assembly, Assembly, Mr. Judy Canas from Renew Europe, uh, also uh, Vice Chair of the Delegation to, for Relations with Latin America, and Mr. Hermantesh, also Vice President of the delegation. So let me give the floor to Mrs. Dita Charansova, Vice President of the European Parliament, please. Good afternoon. It is a great honour and pleasure to welcome President Juan Guaido to the European Parliament today. The political groups present here today held a meeting with President Guaido to talk about the current crisis in Venezuela. The European Parliament has stood by the Venezuelan people right from the start and that's made clear in the 11 resolutions that we've adopted. Our latest resolution, adopted by a majority last week, reiterated our recognition and support of Juan, Juan Guaido as the legitimate interim president of Venezuela and also reiterated our support for a peaceful and democratic transition process in the country. It's a pleasure to be able to transmit this to President Guaido in person. Thank you. Firstly, let me thank the members of the European Parliament for their welcome. It was great to be able to access the Parliament freely. And I say that because that's part of the struggle that we have. Getting into the federal legislative building is difficult, in spite of the fact that uh, we were voted members of the National Assembly by the people of Venezuela. There's a currently a humanitarian emergency going on in Venezuela. Currently, for example, the main children's hospital in Venezuela doesn't have water. It's a paediatric hospital and they can't deal with emergencies. So I am here on behalf of those Venezuelans that don't have a voice at the moment. We want to see democracy, freedom and dignity. These are values that we share with Europe and the European Parliament. And I'd like to thank the European Parliament from the bottom of my heart for inviting me here to Brussels, because we are here today to find the tools to put an end to this tragedy. This is not just a Venezuelan tragedy. There are five million Venezuelans who have left the country. This is a massive humanitarian crisis, and second only to Syria. Then we also have Yemen and South Sudan. These are countries that are at war or where there are civil wars. In Venezuela, there are no bombs, but one million children, for example, in Venezuela are no longer with their parents because they left Caracas by foot to go to Lima or Quito. And they did that because they were hungry so that they could send something home. The majority of the Venezuelan parliament are fighting against the dictatorship, but nevertheless, the dictatorship took over the parliament building on the 5th and the 7th. The army took over. And I'd like to pay tribute to those Venezuelan members of parliament who supported us and resisted. And I'd also like to particularly thank one very special person, Adi Valero, member for the state of Merida in Venezuela. She is ill and on the 30th she went to hospital almost unconscious 
and then she turned up to Parliament, nevertheless, to vote in Parliament, in spite of the fact that she was almost unconscious. She was voting against me. But uh, nevertheless, this is democracy. She was exercising her right to vote, and she said that it would be preferable for her to die rather than for Venezuela to die for want of her vote. Today she passed away. But Venezuela is still alive. It lives on in the defence that its people are putting up. All we want is a genuinely free election. That's what the Venezuelan people want. People are earning almost nothing in Venezuela and yet they continue to fight for the future. Today the dicta dictatorship unfortunately continues in, uh, in uh, Venezuela. They are persecuting me for example because I'm here in Europe looking for support. But in spite of all the dictatorship's efforts the people have remained firm. The illegal mining that is going on for gold in Venezuela, they're killing the Amazon, indigenous people are being killed. The mining industry has 1,200 square kilometres in the Amazon and the Amazon forest is being destroyed. And all of this is to fund terrorist groups in Venezuela. So we need to work for freedom and for democracy. We need to label this gold as blood gold. This is something that Europe could do. I'm sure you have the tools available to put an end to this scourge, this ethnic killi these ethnic killings and this environmental crime. In Venezuela, we need to go back to normality. That's what we need. We also need to provide support for Colombia, Peru, Ecuador. 1.6 million Venezuelans are in Colombia. 1 million Venezuelans are in Peru and they simply left the country by foot because they were looking for food for their families. So you in Europe need to know that we Venezuelans are firm and determined. We are not a divided country, we are a unified country. We want to achieve freedom and democracy. There is no ideological problem here. These are fundamental values, the values of democracy and freedom, standing up against dictatorship and tyranny, who are currently funding armed and terrorist groups. And we, the people, are standing up unarmed to against this dictatorship. On the 15th, we had to enter the parliament building, getting past paramilitaries, we were stopped by vehicles, there were efforts to kill us just because we were trying to do our job. But uh, the teachers, te a group of teachers in Venezuela came with us to protect us with their bare hands. And uh, excrement and urine were thrown at these teachers just because they were of what they were doing. They have to suffer indignities to survive and they have to put up with these kinds of attacks. But they continue to do what they do. And they continue to do what they're doing today. You have a way of putting pressure on Venezuela. The free world can put sanctions on Venezuela in order to put pressure on the dictatorship. There are corrective actions as well that can be taken. I mean, these kinds of emergencies with seven million refugees don't happen from one day to the next. This dictatorship has been in place for years and now we're seeing the result. We're a, we were a democracy, we share values with you in the rest of the world and there are actions that can be taken. There is the Bachelet report which was sent to the UN talking about the FIAS, uh, an armed group that's killed 18,000 people in 10 years and these are extrajudicial killings so there are all sorts of terrible things going on in Venezuela on behalf of those people who don't have a voice students who believe in democracy and freedom and the fact that they can make a difference in Venezuela and the region on behalf of those teachers I'm here thanking you for the resolutions that you've adopted for Venezuelans and Latin Americans we are 
determined to achieve our goals. So please help, try to help us deal with the emergency. I'd like to thank you on behalf of Venezuelans. We want to move towards an appropriate process. And to conclude, this is a massive opportunity as well. Venezuela was a very prosperous country. We have the largest oil reserves in the world. 75 there's been a 75% fall in our oil production in 12 years. 75% fall in GDP as well. Inflation is massive, 10,000% in one year. So there is a massive opportunity here, an economic, social and productive opportunity. A free Venezuela could offer a major alternative we could help to defend fundamental rights right across the world. So thank you very much, members of the European Parliament. Thank you on behalf of the Venezuelan people. It's great to see you standing up for the Venezuelan cause. Thank you very much. This is a press conference. No applause, please. Muchas gracias, señor thank you very much. Opening the floor to questions, I would like to make a few remarks. I kindly remind you, this is a press conference and only journalists are allowed to ask questions by stating their names and the media outlet they represent. Please also address questions only to Mr. Juan Guaido in order to allow our distinguished guest to express himself as much as possible. The MEP sitting on this panel will be available for questions right after this press conference. Uh, please, uh, you, sir. <coughs> Hola, buenas tardes. Uh, Hans von Abuchel, de Politico. Um, señor... Good afternoon. I'm from the Politico magazine. magazine. Mr. Guaido, I'd like to thank you for the struggle that you've undertaken. It's a very serious situation. We've seen that there, has, uh, that there was uh, a big push last year to change the government in Venezuela. And one year on, it looks like the president in Venezuela is uh, just as comfortable in his palace, so there hasn't been a huge change. How c can we envisage a real cha change, perhaps, within uh, a year? How can Europe help in that fight? Sí, eh, bueno, la, el... oh, we've been fighting for years in Venezuela. Uh, you, you can't do things in just one day, but uh, we've uh, seen people people arrested and so on. We've uh, we've we've seen uh, huge things happening in Venezuela. Uh, it's very serious impacts in Venezuela and the rest of Latin America because of persecution, the humanitarian emergency that we've seen under this dictatorship. At the moment, uh, in terms of the. Inauguration. We've seen that uh, there's been uh, years of uh, fighting for the parliament, parliamentary freedom. We've seen years going into building what we're looking for, uh, fighting against this situation in Venezuela. And thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of people have taken to the streets. The, uh, people have been shot, they've been threatened. That carries on happening, but we're uh, unflinching. And there are big opportunities at the moment, despite repression, terrorist groups, MPs being shot, people not being able to get into the, into the committees and parliamentary groups. Uh, some of you have seen all of this happening. So there is a lot of pressure in terms of where we're trying to go in the country. And... Uh, What's happening is something we saw on the 7th of January when people pushed on the doors of the uh, of the palace and uh, the army were pushing back, but the MPs pushed in back again. We managed to get through the doors. That's what's happening. That's a good metaphor for what's happening in Venezuela. Some people are, uh, are propping up the dictatorship, but they're not as strong as they were. They've been usurping uh, the jobs. Uh, they ha have been a dictatorship, uh, uh, thwarting human rights, and so on. But 80% uh, of the people in Venezuela can't get proper water supplies. They have to walk 8 to 12 
kilometres to get water in buckets. So uh, that's not a strong position that the, the countries on in the mo- on the moment. Uh, we used to have 1.3 million um, barrels of, pet- of oil per day, but there's no electricity now. Sometimes people get electricity. So the the uh, Maduro is only strong in trafficking gold and violating human rights and hyperinflation, hyperinflation, uh, thousands of percentage points. That's what he's doing at the moment. And it is sadist what, uh, what he's doing. He's torturing people, uh, arresting people. Uh, Fernando Albán was uh, assassinated and so on. This is what he's doing at the moment, Maduro. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if he's responsible directly for everything that I'm talking about, but he's not governing. What can Europe do? What else can Europe do? Well, what we can do is say that this is blood gold and it shouldn't be used for social controls to fight uh, to finance these uh, the, these groups uh, and uh, ca- carrying out human rights violations. The free world can't watch this happening given the refugee crisis in the region and uh, we need to heal what's going on in Venezuela what's happening under the dictatorship we shouldn't let evil carry on Uh, 11 of my team are in hiding in Venezuela at the moment and we have done huge amounts of work here in terms of the hope that we've got in Venezuela and the teachers I was talking about earlier have been trying to uh, teach students with dignity and what you're saying uh, has changed since uh, 2019, we're in the majority now despite the repression that's happened there is hope and we are moving ahead but with the trust that we can have short-term change. <clears throat> the lady in the back. Yeah. Here, aquí. Ana Núñez Milara, eh, de Informativos Tele5. Ayer mismo usted fue... Yesterday, you saw Mr. Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister. Do you intend to travel... You intended to travel to Spain, but it's not Pedro Sanchez, the Spanish Prime Minister, who is going to receive you. It's the Minister for Foreign Affairs who will receive you. So do you think that there is a problem in spite of the... Uh, the route because there's a coalition with uh, Podemos there? Yes, well, yesterday I was in the UK. I met uh, Boris Johnson, I met Dominic Raab, the Foreign Minister, and we're working very hard to try and work with these with other governments. I mean, we're hoping for a miracle here. We're hoping for the return of democracy in our country. We want to improve trade and diplomatic relations with all countries in the world. But we believe we can achieve this miracle. We can achieve one of the greatest economic recoveries in history. And why am I saying that? Because... Well, we have wonderful relations with Spain. We hope that we're going to be able to agree an agenda with each of those. We're hoping we'll be able to meet with uh, the President and Prime Minister, well, anyone in the countries that we're travelling to who can take decisive action to recover democracy in Venezuela. Buenas tardes, señor Guaidó. Good afternoon, Mr. Guaidó. Alberto Fernández from La La Sexta. I've got... A question in terms of what Europe can do more. Last week, the EP, by means of a resolution, called for sanctions to be stepped up against Maduro. But on Monday, uh, there, there was a vote to carry on with diplomacy instead. So, by means of the contact group, do you, are you aware of the the fact that uh, of the work that's gone over the last few months? Do you still trust in the solution for Venezuela coming from that contact group? Well, having heard from this and uh, the crisis mediation, firstly, our uh, dialogue is necessary in terms of crisis uh, resolution. And two, three years ago, we had a very clear request for free presidential uh, 
dealings and uh, six months on from that uh, free presidential elections and that's what we wanted for that was our condition uh, there's been a lot of fight f- for to, to get uh, the right to vote which should be uh, we should have universal suffrage that's part of, of this struggle that we're undergoing in Venezuela people are struggling to to live in Venezuela we need elections but you need to look at uh, D- Maduro's dictatorial logic is not uh, to do with democracy it's to do with drugs and the black market and this is something we've seen several times and there's mafia involved as well here and uh, there are 2030 MPs that have tried uh, that he's tried to blackmail and with the contract contact group there is an opportunity there but uh, for a specific solution and we need to put pressure on the dictatorship obviously with the sanctions will do that we need to try every single uh, possible way to to do that to put the message across and to try and get an alternative pragmatic alternative for Venezuela uh, and the, the region uh, the, the, the whole of Latin America is affected by this crisis Uh, Thank you. Mr. Guaido, I'm here. Mr. Guaido, two questions. How should we understand this call for elections that Mr. Maduro made ten days ago? That's the first question. Secondly, you weren't authorised to leave the country. Does that mean that you will face a difficult or serious situation when you return to Caracas? Thank you for that question. Well, we need the appropriate conditions to have elections. The dictatorship's talking about elections, just elections, but we want them to be verifiable, transparent, free, etc. And currently we don't have those conditions in place. People cannot choose their elected representative. 32 politicians have been disqualified from running. Political parties are illegal. We don't have a reliable electoral commission. You have to have a pro- the appropriate commission conditions in place to have elections. Maduro is trying to confuse international opinion. But we're talking about the appropriate conditions. That's part of our struggle. We need to have an independent referee that's credible that has international support we have to stop seeing political persecution as a way of doing things we've had violence we've had extortion so this is not a political logic we want free transparent elections in order to solve this crisis and we want to have the elections respecting our constitution and then we have to take apart the dictatorship that was established by Maduro now you're talking about uh, me leaving the country well there are millions of people walking around Caracas it's one of the most violent capitals in the world I would say we're going through a difficult time so my return to Caracas yes well there is a risk there but it's no different from the risk that uh, Ruben Gonzalez took Uh, he was a trade unionist from the south of the country he's now been arrested there was a member of the Venezuelan parliament that disappeared a month ago there was one who was kidnapped uh, yesterday so we all run a risk because of our public roles in Venezuela so we know what we're taking on when we do that We believe that the cohesion and unity and internal pressure that we've achieved needs to be maintained so that we can move towards a solution. And uh, when I return, well, I want to do that safely and I want to continue the struggle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now there is respect here, regardless of political point of view. Uh, 
and uh, you are uh, an MP president. Mr. Guaido, what does the world need to do to see to see a violation of human rights that uh, you've been dealing with? A lot of newspapers uh, trying to get into the parliament recently to, to show the violence, to, sit, to where violence was seen. What are the next steps to be taken? What do we need to do? What do the international community need to do to put more pressure uh, on the Maduro regime, uh, aside from dialogue and sanctions? What else uh, do we need? Thank you for that question. Well, at at the moment, the world uh, is very much aware of what Maduro is doing, not only in Latin America, but uh, the free world is, is clear of this. And... Uh, we're very much aware of uh, what the dictatorship's doing. It's, it's not political freedom at all. Not only bearing in mind the tragedy, the crisis afoot, but the need to work towards a solution. And this is something that so we've said uh, several times a day we need presidential elections. And. We've got, uh, we, we've got uh, a web channel in Venezuela. Uh, th- there hasn't been a proper TV program over the last uh, ha- year and a half radio programs that can talk about my name because uh, the journalists fall foul to this. This is something you know very much of, uh, because of your Venezuelan colleagues, uh, but you're not alone. But we need to take action, yes, of course so that we have dignity again and human rights values uh, Venezuelans have a role here and I'm doing that and this is what we're very much aware of that a lot of sacrifices have been made there's a lot of pain uh, but we need to heal the region, the country and we need to mobilise so that people's deaths aren't in vain and all the repression that we've seen uh, all Venezuelans uh, have seen uh, very much since 2015 with the majority that we want change, but now we need it and the world support will be essential there to uh, avoid uh, difficult situations with other countries uh, who use Venezuela's resources, but particularly so that we become free again. We have an opportunity here this is a great time uh, two years back it would have seen seemed impossible but we've got unity now everything has come together in venezuela and we've got an opportunity and i would say once again there's a vision that i would like to put across to you of a country where all year round it's 20 30 degrees it's warm Great uh, productivity, long, long-lasting democracy, and so on. Not only uh, this is something that we saw uh, in Latin America for a long time, but we can be a prosperous country again, uh, respecting fundamental values, dignity, and so on. And people need to be listened to and understood. What we're calling for in social terms, we need to meet those uh, challenges and we need to stand up against the dictatorship. I would like to thank you again on behalf of uh, Venezuela. If we need to jump over walls, we will will do that. If we need to push people over, then we will do that. And uh, as we said on the 7th of January at the Parliament, we will, uh, as we did in the the Parliament, we will open the doors in the region in Venezuela. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone.